country. You all dressed up pretty today, boy. That's a pity, because we wouldn't have to wait till tonight. We could get that ring right now if you wanted to, boy. Huh? Let's go let the suit slow you down, big boy. Coach John Heath sitting in for Gordon Soley, who will return next week. Uh, Barbara, we have a very exciting show, but before we do that, let's go to you and find out what your Take 5 is all about. Well, this is part four of the series Miami, Crisis or Paradise, and this week it concerns the Orange Bowl and the Lords of the Rings. Well, we'll be looking forward to that Take 5. You know, it's always a thrill to have a new world champion, and this handsome, muscular young man sitting next to me has man that defeated Ric Flair. He is Curry Von Erich, the new world heavyweight wrestling champion. Curry, congratulations on your tremendous victory over Ric Flair and welcome to Championship Wrestling from Florida. Well, thank you very much, Coach. You know, it's always a great honor to be here in Florida. But it's even a greater honor to have the world heavyweight title. You know, I know now that coming into Florida that I will be facing the toughest and the finest competition and all of the United States. And we're looking forward to it because that's what the world title is all about. Going against the best every night. Thank you very much, Gary. I'll be looking forward to having you here for the first match. We have an exciting program today. And among other things, we're gonna have a $1,000 challenge with superstar Billy Graham in an arm wrestling contest. I see that our first match is just about to begin. And the contestants are in the far corner in blue trunks, Dennis Brown. His opponent in black trunks, the Southern heavyweight wrestling champion, Ron Bass. And he's accompanied to the ring by his manager, Panama Gang, referee, Jim Tanaka. Brown has to be one of our most courageous and aspiring young wrestlers. He had a match with Bass last week and gave him a tremendous match and a good, good underarm thing that took Bass off his feet and may have surprised Ron Bass. You know, Coach, Ron Bass is just, he's one of the examples of the greatest competition here in Florida. He is a great competitor and he's a great wrestler. There's no doubt about it. The man that holds the Southern Heavyweight title has to be way at the top of the list. And Curry, I know that you have a match coming up with Ron Bass tonight in the Super Bowl, in the Sun Dome there. And I'll tell you, you're going to have to really be on your toes. This man is rough, tough, and he is capable of beating any wrestler in the world on any given night. So be on your toes. Definitely, Coach Ron Bass is the number one competitor. I'm not taking nothing away from that. I've heard about Ron Bass ever since I've ever been into professional wrestling. I've heard about what he's done. And uh, he is a man you cannot take him for granted. He can, he can slip in any time and, and take the world title any time. And I know that. And I'll be ready. And sir, Dennis Brown has certainly give Ron a little bit of a test here today. That was a nice single spin under. He took Bass off his feet again. Now he's got a bar arm twist on him. And Brown is one of our, as I said before, up and coming wrestlers, lots of courage, and gaining experience against the best. I think the young kid Denny Brown is doing a heck of a job against an athlete like Ron Bass. He's certainly utilizing his one advantage that he has. He's just a little bit shorter than Bass, and that helps him with that single underarm spin. And that takes the man off his feet and puts him in a bar lock. It must be a little frustrating to Bass right now, unless he's underestimated Brown. But Brown, don't forget. Here's the opportunity of a lifetime for a young man. As I've said many times, the adrenaline flows just a little faster and puts you in there maybe at 150%. So Bass better not be looking past Brown, but I'm sure he's got his thoughts on you tonight. All right, he's got him in a standing cross body ride. It's a tremendous hole. Referee 
Jim Tanaka has stopped the match. A submission hold. Far leg scissor, near arm lever. And boy, he really stuck an arm. And that Lord, Lord, the match watching this match makes me look forward to tonight. See that, boy? That's what you call wrestling, huh? That is what you call wrestling, boy. And I say something. You all dressed up pretty today, boy. That's a pity. Because we wouldn't have to wait till tonight. We could get in that ring right now if you wanted to, boy. Huh? Let's don't let the suit slow you down, big boy. Don't let the suit fool you, baby. Come on, you get in the night, baby. Come on, baby. We'll do it right now. Let's take time for commercial and we'll be right back. Night will be the night, coach. Wrestling returns to Fort Lauderdale Sunrise Music Theater on Wednesday, May 23rd, 8 o'clock. And what a night of wrestling. We have a lumberjack match with world-famous junkyard dog going, against, going up against the superstar, Billy Graham. A United States tag team title with no disqualification, no DQ. Barry Windham and Mike Rotundo team up to go against the champions of Ron Bass and Black Bart. There'll be a Florida heavyweight title match with champion Billy Jack going up against Kevin Sullivan. Mike Davis and Mike Graham team up to go against Hector Guerrero and Malachi. Big Daddy returns and goes up against Inferno number one. Danny Brown will test Gordon Gray. Fans, last week I witnessed on this television program, as did millions of others, a reprehensible act I don't, that I don't think belongs in professional wrestling or professional sports. Uh, Dusty, how is Blackjack Mulligan? Well, Coach, you know, Blackjack Mulligan being the head of the family and being the uh, leader and the, and the straw and the, and the strong rock that we all hold on to in our family, it was, uh, it was devastating because I know, Kevin Sullivan, that the golden spike was meant for Dusty Rhodes, the American dream. It was meant for the uh, greatest sports attraction in this country today. It was meant for good. And you are evil. And, and, and Black Jack Mulligan is seriously injured. He took the blow meant for me. This is the second time there was a public assassination attempted on my life, live on this television program. And this one's not going to go on past it. I want, I want Dave Toker, the psychedelic cameraman and director, to cue this thing up. And let's take a look at it as it happened with me in the Purple Haze. You can see right here, it was one of the most grueling matches ever seen on TV. Dusty Rhodes heavily lacerated the Purple Haze had come in at the wheel of the devil to do his deeds. And you see him right here. There's a Molokai. And there is Kevin Sullivan right here. You're going to see one of the most devious acts ever done in the state of Florida right here. I got the figure four submission hole that I put the one-man games trail out and, 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 and can no longer wrestle right now. This is recorded. You see the spike coming right here. And as I'm coming up, Blackjack Mulligan here takes the spike in the heart, right in the middle of the heart. And he was heavily lacerated. It was like getting blown away with a 12-gauge shotgun at point blank range, brother. And there is no justice for that. There is nothing that I can say that will uh, tell you how bad this thing is and what pain this man is in, what pain the family is in, and what pain Dusty Rhodes, the American dream, is in because the devil has taken this into my family on numerous occasions and this thing has to cease. It has to stop. And I'm going to tell you one thing, Kevin Sullivan. I want you to understand the situation here championship wrestling of Florida is calling for suspension of Kevin Sullivan we don't want suspension blackjack mulligan don't want suspension because what we gonna do to you goes over the boundaries of professional wrestling and I really don't give a damn whether I'm suspended or not as this case because it's gone beyond wrestling. I've been world champion two times. I know what it feels like to sit out here like this kid did and carry that strap. And to carry the burden of the weight of the world on your shoulders. And it's heavy going through life being a star and riding down the road in a silver jail with four wheels on it night after night and seeing your family only occasionally and socially and seeing uh, your baby occasionally and socially and now then beyond the bounds of wrestling comes the conflict 
of the devil versus good. Sullivan, the end is near for you because me and the head of the family, Blackjack Mulligan, now will stop in no means to publicly assassinate you and your spirit throughout this world that drives Dusty Rhodes, the American dream, and Blackjack Mulligan and the family. Write that down in your book, Buddha Adin. Coach, thank you very much, baby. Thank you, Dusty. We'll be back with superstar Billy Graham in a $1,000 arm wrestling contest. Seated next to me, as you can plainly see, is the sometimes controversial, but always colorful, Sir Oliver Humberdine. How have you been? I've been great, Coach, and it's good to be back here in Florida, seeing all the people that I knew. You know, Florida always has a special place in my heart because I've been very successful here in the past. Right now, Coach, I'm on my way to the Caribbean. I'm just passing through, but no trip to Florida would be complete without stopping by here. And I was hoping to see Gordon Soley today, but I hear Gordon's laid up, and I hope he's going to be back real soon. But it's great to see you. This is right, a heck of a man right here. He'll be back next week. Listen, uh, a friend of yours is in Florida right now, That's and a uh, former stablemate. That's what I understand. He is supposed to come out here right now. I just got in. I just got in. I haven't seen anybody, but I, I hear that Billy Graham is here, and Billy Graham and I have been associated in the past. It's going to be good to see Billy. Okay. But there's a lot of exciting things happening right now, Coach, in the world of wrestling. You just had the new world's heavyweight champion on your program here, Kerry Von Erich. I want to congratulate Mr. Von Erich because it takes a heck of a man to beat a guy like Ric Flair. But everybody knows that the true test of a champion is not who he beats. There's Billy Graham right there, but how long he keeps it. i got to go say, do you mind if I say a little bit? We're live on national television. Gonna arm up this young man here and show the world. Look at here, man. You've been, you've been touring the world, my man. I got a man here, brother. I got to take care of some business here, brother. I got to arm wrestle with this man here. This man has signed a valid contract. He signed a waiver against injury, a valid contract. Young, good-looking athlete here. I'm showing the world that Superstar Billy Graham is the greatest arm wrestler on the face of the world. No man, mammal, or reptile can put my arm down, brother. Now, I wonder if you do me a favor and just do some commentating here, because I got to take care of business, Sir Oliver. The coach don't mind. The coach don't mind. Ladies and gentlemen, right here, I didn't really plan on doing this today, but $1,000 riding on the line right here. Superstar Billy Graham, the arm wrestling champion of the universe. Against this young man, he looks like a well-conditioned athlete. We'll take a look and see what happens right here. Wait a minute, man, what's this man doing out there? Referee, what's this man doing out there? What do you persist on coming out here, man, and interrupt you? Get over here, Oliver Humperdinck. Oliver, referee, get this man off the set, man. Yeah. This man persists on interrupting. You're saying there's a contract. I waited here over here since 9 o'clock this morning, and I didn't see no God. I didn't see no contract in there, pump. There's contracts to be signed, man. You're always showing up late, brother. I'm telling you, this man over here signed a valid contract. Now get out of my face. You're, and you're, big, me, you're man. putting a big front. Look, and I know you're not afraid of me. You've been interfering in every match. You're trying to hurt people with a full Nelson. And I'm sick and tired of you, man. Man, so you're going to face me one on one sometimes. Just get this man to spin it. Anything you want to do. Leave man. me alone, Billy Jack. Get off the set, man. I got to do some arm wrestling here. I got the arm wrestling this man. Get this man off the set. There's no contract back there, man. There was no contract from over the world. Sign contract. No contract. Let's get the police officers out there, man. Get you off the set, man. Don't you be in there my arm wrestling contest. Hey! Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know quite what's going on here. I don't even know who this individual is, but he's not very well-mannered coming out here like that. The man has got a contract. This man has got a contract. I don't even know who this guy is. Who is he? Some guy. I know who he is. He's Billy Jack, man. He's a jerk. That's what he is. He's some chump trying to make the big time. He ain't going to make the big time at the practice of the top of the grill. Show him what you're made out of, Star. Yes, brother. Are you ready, man? Uncouth individual is Billy Jack, whoever he is. Let's take a look at this arm wrestling contest. $1,000 on the line. Billy Graham putting up a grand. $1,000 against anyone. <laughs> Good shot of that 24-inch python right there, ladies and gentlemen. They're getting ready to lock up. Referee Jimmy Tanaka making sure it's all set. Everybody's ready. This is a fair competition. Go. 
Here we go. With ease. Twice. Three times. Three times. Three times. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, Billy Graham. Beat him three times. Keeps his thousand dollars. Congratulations. Thank oh, you, my you man. Great. You Thank great. you, my man. Yeah. That's fantastic scene. Yeah, that's all yeah, fantastic brother. Scene. The human pythons can't be moved. I like the it. human python, man. All of the humpity. The world's greatest manager could see you, brother. I'll be around. Would I'll you mind around. narrating my, my wrestling contest? I got I'll the grapple here, brother. Go do your thing. Okay, my man. Hey, right. brother. Well, I see that we have a match coming up in the ring. One fall, 10 minute time limit. In the far corner, we have Wild Bill Snyder. His opponent, superstar Billy Graham. Well, coach, I, I've been gone for a little while and I don't know a whole lot of these people, these uh, these wrestlers I got here now, but this Billy Jack seems to be a, a wild young individual. Well, there certainly can be no doubt about the power of superstar Billy Graham. He has to be one of the two most powerful men in the wrestling world today and the other has to be undoubtedly has to be Billy Jack well, it's and Billy Jack. should they ever meet brother I've never seen a, the kid wrestle but he's built powerfully huge huge man I don't think he's quite to the point yet that uh, superstar Billy Graham is in physique Billy's got those 24 inch arms he looks stronger bigger and better than ever oh, I'm he's really impressed. In fantastic shape there's a little doubt about it we have a match going on here where Superstar is taking Wild Bill Snyder and whipped him into the turnbuckle. Gave him go. an elbow coming off the rope. You know, Coach, if I was a betting man, and you know I've wagered a little bit in the past, I'd put every dime I own on Superstar Billy Graham in any kind of a contest. Well, that remains to be seen. I wouldn't underestimate Billy Jack at all in that type of a match. A double chop in there by Superstar Billy Graham, and he's certainly he working on the head. And he throat area of Wild Bill Snyder taking the oxygen away from him. Uh, we certainly have a courageous young athlete in there trying to get experience, but I'm afraid he's in with too much man today. Well, you know, Billy Graham has been a, a top contender wherever he's been, from New York down here to Florida to the West Coast, all over the world. The name of Billy Superstar Graham is... is is famous in the world of wrestling. Well, he's not it's top synonymous. He was world heavyweight title. He had the world heavyweight exactly title. Exactly right. Exactly right. The man is phenomenal. He looks better than I've seen him look in a long, long time. But I see the Wild Bill Snyder in the true character of a professional wrestler is not laying down. He's coming back, giving it all he's got. One thing I found out about professional wrestlers, you can put them in there and you think you've got to beat 99%. You better stay awake because they don't die. They come back. And All they it keep takes fighting. is three seconds, as you three know, coach. Seconds, three seconds, and that's not a whole lot of time. But you got to give this kid, Wild Bill Snyder, a lot of credit for having just guts enough to put his name on a contract with a guy like Graham. Well, he's smart enough also to know that the experience he gains against one of the top contender contenders in the world is going to be his advantage. Uh oh, there it There's is. There's that full Nelson. It's got to be one of the two most powerful in the world, and that's the most powerful. Jim Tanaka wisely stops the match. The most powerful in the world. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, it, what pain, what, what power he's putting on this kid now. The kid knows he's been in a wrestling match by this point, I'm sure. All right. Well, a little doubt about it. A little doubt about it. Superstar is the winner, and we'll be right back with Mike Rotunda. Well, thus far, it's been one exciting day of wrestling. Superstar Billy Graham have been challenged by Billy Jack and the return of Sir Albert Humperdinck. And I'm hoping to have, and yes, here we do. How are you, Coach? Uh, and this handsome young man sitting next to me is, of course, Mike Rotundo. Uh, Mike that I have admired so many years for your ability to be able to use your hips so properly, which is the hmm. sign of a super advanced collegiate style wrestler and now a professional wrestler. Thank you very Mike, much, I know coach. you're after that Southern title. You know, I'm looking forward to it, Coach, because this is something I had when I first came down to Florida. I beat uh, Purple Haze. I was off to a good start. I defeated Ronnie Bass, and I'm looking forward to regaining that Southern title. But this time, J.J. Dillon isn't with Bass, so I have a good chance of getting it, Coach. Mike, I've got some good news for you. In Sarasota, I have a United States Tag Team title 
time up. You and Barry Windham are going to go up against the camp champions of Cowboy Ron Bass and Black Bart. But for you fans in Sarasota and Manatee counties, listen to this. You are about to be the first ones to see on the mainland the, the bout that everyone has been waiting for throughout the state of Florida, probably the southeast. I am referring to, of course, Billy Jack versus superstar Billy Graham in a battle of the full Nelsons. This confrontation is going to settle once and for all. Who is the strongest? Personally, I don't know, and I don't think anybody else does at this point. You know, Sarasota, the 26th on a Saturday night, the 26th of May is going to be some night. Barry and I are going after those U.S. Tag Team titles. We've been thinking hard on it. We've been training hard, and this is going to be our time. And that, what a match that's going to be. Everybody wants to see Billy Graham versus Billy On the 26th in Sarasota, the battle of everybody's going to be waiting for, Billy Jack against superstar Billy Graham. I see that we are now ready for our next match. One fall with a 10-minute time limit in the far corner in a black universal, Mike Fever. His opponent, accompanied to the ring by his manager, Panama Gang, is the current co-holder of the United States Tag Team title, Black Boy. Now, this nope. is going to be quite a contest for Mike Fever. He's going up against a lot of weight and experience and a man good enough to hold one half of that United States Tag Team title has an awful lot of talent behind him. You know, Mike Fever's come out, really come on these last few weeks. I've been watching him coach. He seems like a changed wrestler. He's been a lot more aggressive, and that's that's how you have to take it to a man like Black Bart, having that weight advantage on you, as you well know. Well, and of course you're speaking from years of experience also, but I noticed that these fellows, that they have to do it by going up against better competition. You know, you don't get better unless you wrestle somebody better than yourself. And these young fellows are doing it each and every week, and they're showing the results. That's right, Coach. That's, that, that's uh, the step you have to take is to sign those contracts, go up against somebody that you think is as good or better, because that's how you improve. You know, if you wrestle the best, you're going to become the best after a while if you want it bad enough. Absolutely. Well, I've seen it. Fever has forced Bart to go to the ropes. And, you know, they say good luck to him, good luck to him. You know, good luck is really preparation meeting opportunity. And that's what these young fellows are doing. They're preparing themselves for the opportunity to go against the best and someday beat them. Both men right here are working on that arm. You can see a nice reversal by Mike Fever. And again, Black Bart tries to get to those ropes, but I think Fever got stunned on that one, Coach. He hit his well, head on the turnbuckle. Well, he had a nice hammerlock on him, but he got caught when he got tied into that turnbuckle. Right there, Black Bart reverses the hair already, Coach. Well, of course he's showing a lot of rings, Sadie. He knew that he knew that the opponent was stunned there, and he stayed up in that head area, and he's staying right in the head and neck area. He's taking advantage of the shot to weaken his opponent just to, just for the second, and the snap now, and now that rear chin lock. He's still up in the upper body there, Mike. There's no doubt that this man can wrestle this black part. I've been in the ring a number of times against him, and he has the ability to wrestle, Coach, but there's too many times that he takes a shortcut out there in the ring. So you have to be aware of that as a wrestler. Uh, uh, be aware of him taking the shortcuts and be on your toes and be uh, alert at all times. And just, you know, you have to fight fire with fire sometimes. That's Well, that's one of the advantages of experience. Well, as the young fella gets in, he's get, he gets caught off balance. And here, here he was caught off balance right there with that knee to the lower abdominal area. And that's taking all that wind out of him. It's going to certainly hurt his progress in this match. Strong shot to the head by that elbow, and Mike is in an awful lot of trouble. Uh-oh. There's a maneuver that's very painful, Coach. Drop, he drops him right across that top rope. If you get hit the wrong way, it's your Adam's apple. I know. I believe a few weeks ago you wished that that was bad. Neck breaker. Strong neck breaker, and with all that weight the bike brought down, that could very really well spell curtain for Mike Fever. He's taking him over in the corner again, drops his head right across that turnbuckle. He's taking advantage of a man who is almost out on his feet here. Mike Fever's in trouble right now, coach. Oh, 
Another shot to the head, but Mike, through the instinct, that he's gained in that professional ring. He's not going to quit. He's trying to fight back. He's on his feet again. Well, as you can see there, Coach, excuse me, he's been working on that neck. He dropped him across the road twice. Continuously working on that neck. And when your neck goes, as you all know, you're in a lot of trouble. A point well taken because where your head goes, you go. It looks like he's trying to set him up for a vertical supply, but instead he's just punishing him, punishing him with a cross face in there. He seems to be punishing the man right now rather than going for the pin. Right? Yeah, there's no need for that, Coach. You know, he should be going for the... Ooh. Looks like he's got him in position. Oh, Ooh, okay. not breaking, Coach. Oh, power oh, drivers. He's covering him right here with him. Oh, he's got the pin. That part has got the pin on my right now, Coach. No need for that. Uh, no need for that. Mike. Mike is just can't stand it anymore. Here comes Ron Bass. There's Ron Bass, one man down. Left ball jamming up on Mike Rotundo. This is out of the affair. Barry Wyndham is joined in to help out his partner, Mike Rotundo. And they are fist flying all over the world. What a turn. And the game is taken out. And it's a wild, frailty scene here. Battling outside of the ring, and it's Black Bart, Cowboy Ron Bass, Mike Rotundo, and Barry Wyndham in a wild melee. Something has got to be done here. We have got to get order. Somehow or another, we've got to get order. Order has to be restored. And here comes Billy Jack now. This man is phenomenal. His arms must also be in a 22-inch arm area, I mean, inch area, and hard as a rock. A super athlete. And I see that our next match is about to begin. In the far corner, your Florida heavyweight wrestling champion, Billy Jack. And his opponent, Mr. Olympia. This match is scheduled for one fall, 10 minute time limit. Mr. Olympia comes out rather quickly trying to get to the advantage side of Jack. Jack offers his hand and it's refused by Olympia. I would think that might be a mistake. Side headlock by Olympia. Jack shakes him off and hits him with that powerful 50 inch chest. That is just like a piece of concrete. He's gonna try it again and he didn't land the first time. Jack is so strong. He's got to be one of the two strongest men in the entire world. Uh-oh. Picks him up for a hard full slam. A drop kick puts Olympia on the back. A snap nail by Billy Jack. And then he clenches in into that rear chin lock that takes away and frustrates your opponent. No way to go. No way to go unless you can do a complete back out and get that near arm around your opponent's waist. But when you've got the arms of Billy Jack wrapped around that neck, jaw, and head area of yours, you're thinking about one thing, survival. This man is so strong, I wouldn't be surprised if he had the power in there to make Mr. Olympia pass out because he could cut off the extended carotid arteries that go up right through that area. It's almost in the position of a sleeper. The referee breaks it off because he did reach the rope, and Olympia came back with a cheap shot into the eyes that he will regret later, I am sure. However, he's trying to work on that head area, Jack, take the advantage of that little bit of illegal illegality that he pulled there, and Jack is a little disturbed right now, banging Olympia's head right into the Turnbuckle, a smash across the head, and a full solid front bear hug. And now he has him elevated, dropped him into a crotch, we call it a crotch drop, and that hurt. Olympia may be wondering, just where am I right now? A shot into the lower abdominal area by Billy Jack, that heavy big 
16, 17-inch forearm. Brought down across the back of Olympia. And there it is, the world-famous Phil Nelson of Billy Jacks. Stuck on Mr. Olympia, and Olympia is going nowhere but bye-bye. And Jimmy Kanaka very wisely stops the match. And your winner, of course, Billy Jack. I certainly would like to get Billy Jack over to the desk with me. He's such an interesting personality and a fine young athlete of man. Billy? I'd like to have you come over to the mic for a moment, please. It'd be my honor. Billy, congratulations on a fine victory. Thank you. I'll tell you what. You signed us a match. Me a match with superstar Billy Graham of Sarasota the 26th of May. Is this correct? That's right, Bill. Now look, I've always admired superstar Billy Graham when I was a kid. I don't know, he's still tough. He's trying to purposely hurt people. I don't know what his problem is. He's got something against me. But I'm a competitor. I come here to Florida. I'm the Florida State Heavyweight Champion. I'll take on any man, any time, any place. Because I wrestle for the people. I'm like a dusty road. I back down from no man. And Billy Graham, I'm going to look you right in the eye right now. And I'm going to say this. You're not afraid of me like you're telling everybody else. I don't care what money, whatever you want to put up, but let's put up or shut up. Because you're trying to purposely hook people on this ring with this fool Nelson. You're putting it high up on your neck. I've had to run in about six, seven times to save these guys. Now you want to try that with me, punk? Because I'm ready for anything you've got to offer me, boy. Anytime, any place, anywhere on the face of the earth, just like you say. Because I got me. I got me some pythons too, brother. Yeah, I got some pythons. And it's coming right on your butt. So you better get loose to it. And I got everybody in Florida backing me up. And one of us in Sarasota is going to get hurt, punk. Thank you very much. You're going to get that job. Thank you, Billy Jack. I've never seen him that upset before. Watch out, superstar. You're in for a long night. We'll be right back with a take five from Barbara. In the last three weeks, we've seen some people and places in Miami, notably the Orange Bowl, where I spoke with Simone to Chris Dundee, Dusty Rhodes, Frank Basha, Barry Windham, and Mike Rotundo about wrestling and their love for the area. Well, the wrestlers are going to be going back to the Orange Bowl for an incredible evening of action when Championship Wrestling presents the Lords of the Ring in the Orange Bowl Stadium on the 30th of June at 8.30 p.m. Now, I have been informed that CWF is making available special limited seating arrangements in the Paradise Lounge Box. This will be limited to 100 people at a price of $100 per person, but this ticket includes seats in the air-conditioned lounge box in which to view the Lords of the Ring, champagne and food during the matches, special Lords of the Ring souvenirs, and a cocktail party after the matches with the wrestlers. Tickets are on sale now, but they will be limited to only 100 tickets, so you need to get them now. You can get your tickets at the following locations, either by writing the Orange Bowl Stadium, Post Office Box 330708, Miami, Florida, 33133, or by calling area code 8305-579-6971. They will accept cashier's checks or money orders only. Hurry up, there's only 100 tickets available, and it is most definitely the ultimate way to enjoy the Lords of the Ring. That's our take five for this week. So accompanying them to the ring on the outside is Kevin Sullivan. Well, this should be certainly one action-packed tag match with the type of 
wrestlers and talent that we have in the ring for this match. The speed of both Hector Guerrero and Chief Joe Lightfoot. Ring savvy of Mike Davis and the unknown quantity of Malachi, who I'm sure must have it, or Kevin Sullivan would not be associated with him. Side headlock by Chief Joe Lightfoot. Crisscross in the ring. Dropped down by Hector, but he got fooled. That was a wing over and another wing over by Chief Joe Lightfoot. And Hector wants no more of that. That really stings you back and takes out the oxygen. That wing over varies a lot from the spin over. In fact, it hits you a little harder. Both men squaring off again. Hector with the side headlock now. Fairly tight one up in what we call about the number three position above the ears. But he's being countered by Chief Joe Lightfoot. And Hector has brought it back again, and it looks like there might have been a little illegal move to make that positioning that Hector is enjoying right now, but he's shaken off. And an elbow by Mike Davis puts Hector on his back, and a snap over headlock by Mike Davis, and countered by a head scissors by Hector Guerrero. We have three of the fastest and outstanding young wrestlers in the country in the ring right now. The Malachi, as I say, is still an unknown fact to me. I have not observed him that much. A big man, and I don't know what type of an attack he will use once he gets into the ring. Top wrist lock, which was broken up by Hector Guerrero, taking him over to his corner, showing experience that he's using his partner to an advantage. And he has him in a double underhook to the advantage of Malachi, who brings down a chop on the back of the head. Another chop on the back of the head, and these are devastating blows as far as thought processes and very frustrating. A top arm bar with a lever underneath. And he's working on the deltoid section of Chief Joe Lightfoot. He's got the arm bar, and he's working on the left deltoid section. He wants to take away 25% of the attack of Chief Joe Lightfoot, and that's exactly what good wrestlers do, and Malachi is showing ring experience here. He knows what he wants to do, he's going after that one part, and he's doing some damage. And he tags out to Hector Guerrero, who undoubtedly will come back into that same area. Yes, he is. On bar and twist, and he takes him into a double. I couldn't see because of the ring post, but he looked like he had him in a double under. And he's putting that left deltoid into the turnbuckle again, and they're doing a lot of damage to the left deltoid of Lightfoot. He's got a top cross face and a base chicken wing on Church Chief Joe Lightfoot, who is utterly helpless right at the present time. Director Hector Guerrero decides to relieve that hole. He wanted to go for a big splash, probably, and make it a definite pin, but he missed. Lightfoot still had the presence of mind to get out of the way. Lightfoot's not out of this contest by any means of imagination, but he is taking a tremendous pounding at the hands of these two men. Malachi looks like he has certainly got a lot of ring saving experience. Using the rope to his advantage to cut off the oxygen, and a high slam. And Lightfoot does tag out now. He is taking an awful lot of punishment. Try to get over to Mike Davis, Joe. That could be your only hope right now. You've got two men working on you. That's actually a non drag that Malachi threw Lightfoot into that far, far rope with and brought him back and gave him another smash in the upper thoracic region being held there by Malachi, and then in comes Hector Guerrero again. Chief Joe Lightfoot has to get out of this ring. And both men collide in midair in the middle of the ring, and both men are stunned at this time. Who will be the first to get up? And it appears that Hector Guerrero is getting up. He has taken the less, lesser of the two as far as punishment is concerned. And he's arm dragging See Joe Lightfoot over, but Joe Lightfoot has got him caught in a double leg crucifix that almost had him in a printing situation there. And Lightfoot coming back with it. 
two chops and tags out to Davis, a fresh man. Davis coming in and wreaking havoc on the Hector Guerrero. And an elbow smash by Davis. And a high wizard takeover by Davis. And he's always going to square off with Sullivan. Keep awake, Mike. There's somebody behind you. Uh-oh, a roll-up, and he has him almost in a saddle cradle, and that does it. He got caught, distracted by Sullivan, a mistake that could happen in a rash of embattlement, and that's exactly what happened. 